This video shows how to automate the initial setup of a Raritan Intelligent PDU using the serial port. Now, I've got a Raritan PDU. There's a little webcam focused on it, and at the moment it doesn't have anything plugged into it. There's no console port connection or Ethernet. Uh, this laptop, I've got a serial port connection. I'll just open up a PuTTY session and connect COM port 7 at that speed. Now what I'm going to do is just go and plug in my serial port. Hang on one sec. So we've just seen the login appear. So I'll log in as admin. Now I'm going to reset this unit to its factory defaults. Now while I'm waiting for that to reset, I'm going to open up a command prompt. This command prompt will be automated to run a session to do the configuration. And this second command prompt will be where we run the program that drives everything. I need to set up a few passwords first. Firstly, the password used to log into Aurora Tampedu after it's been initialized to factory defaults. And I'm also going to set up a new password. This one's a little bit longer for security. I'm also going to set up some other environment variables now. I'm going to set PDU name equal to PX2 study. I'm going to set IP address to be equal to 192.168.1.40. I'm also going to specify the subnet mask. And I'm going to set the gateway environment variable to hold the gateway address. Now we can see here, we're just waiting. So we're back up and running. The device is reset to its factory default. So I'm going to close this party session now. And let's go back to what we're doing here. I'm now going to run a Python program I've called serial config. I'm going to tell it I'm connecting to a PX device. This is a PX2 PDU. I'm on COM port 7 and I have a list of commands in a file called px2setup.cmd. Let's press return and see what happens. So in the command window on the left hand side it started up a program called serial term which establishes a serial connection to the PDE. It's logged into the PDE it's now setting up a restricted service agreement banner. It's setting some other security parameters. It's now changing the default admin password. Always a good idea. It's now setting the PDU name and its IP addressing information. It's now setting up a new user called Andy C with operator role. And it's also going to install my SSH public key as well. And that's it finished. Now if I try and ping we're not getting a response. And hey ho, well that's because the network cable isn't attached. So let me go and attach the network cable. Well, now we can see that we're getting a response from that IP address. Let's start up a web browser. There are no certificates installed yet, so we just have to add an exception.
Now we see that the that the restricted banner um, has displayed, so I need to just tick here. And if I log in admin, and you can see I'm using the longer password here. This is just to prove that it has that it's no longer at its default setting. We get logged in. We've got the PDU, it's got the correct name. If this was at factory defaults, that would simply say my space PX. If I look at the device settings, we can see it's got the gateway that I specified. And if we look at the Ethernet, we see that it's got a static IP and the IP address which I specified, which we can see up there. Also, if I go back to the home page and to user management, it's also created a, a user for me. So just to prove that that user set up correctly, I'll log out. Oops. And you see that we're logged in as me. And that's all looking good. So if we log out of there, And also what we have, if we see what's in this file, px2 setup.out, we have a transcript of the everything that was being automated. So this is basically a copy of what we've seen here. This screen scrolls past, so you can't see the information that's gone past. You could scroll back, but um, the program has also saved all of that output in a file, which would be really quite handy. You might have audit compliance procedures which you might need to uh, produce this file for. And the heart of everything, for those techies who are watching and thinking, how did you do that? The whole thing gets driven by a fairly easy file to set up where once it's established a login, it can issue the command, so the config command, waits for the appropriate response back from the PDU, and then it sends all the various uh, command lines to get things set up and provide and sends in the information which it needs. So this is just setting the number of logins to unlimited. Don't do this in production systems. This is just a test system. Um, here's a bit where the admin password is changed. Um, note that the password, it's not new pass. It's getting the environment, the value of the environment variable. That's why we did those set the setting up of the environment variables earlier, which we saw up here. And it basically works on a similar process there. And it's extensible if, if you've got other requirements of things that you need to set up. You simply need to put the commands in with the appropriate prompts into this file. Um, and then each one which you configure will do the exact thing that you have. So it's completely configurable and controllable. Now, because we're now at this point, what I could do is I could now unplug the serial port. I could plug into the next PDU that I have to configure and give it a new name. give it a new IP address and then go through run the thing again and it would go through configure the next one third one do the same thing fourth one do the same thing so this would be very useful for example if you're deploying a lot of Revitam PDUs out on site say so you take your laptop along and as each one gets unpacked and powered up you can attach your laptop and run the configuration through and assign a unique IP address to each one as you install it in each cabinet as you go around. Or you could pre-configure everything on, uh, at your office in, in your deployment lab, then pack everything up, take it on site, install everything into the uh, uh, correct cabinets, attach straight onto the customer network, and hey presto, you're up and running. Everything's got a secure password, fixed IP, and you'll look fantastic, and you'll be on site for less time. So that's an example of how we can do the configuration of a Rarotown PDU through the serial port. But all these techniques, uh, if you have other PDUs or other network devices with serial ports that you configure it with a command line interface, this whole approach and methodology can be adapted and used to whatever environment you might be using. If you'd like to see more details, those are my details up, up on the screen. As always, thank you very much for watching and it would be great to hear from you.